Hey, I want to share with you today on the subject of balancing out grace, faith, and works. You know, there are a lot of people that are um, discussing the subject of grace lately. It's kind of in vogue. It's always been in vogue with God, but it's lately being something that's being restored in its strength to the body of Christ. And yet there's a reaction by the, the faith folk um, saying, you know, what's this business of emphasizing the sovereignty of God and the grace and the completed work of Christ and his finished um, you know, uh, activities on the cross and so on. And then where does works fit into this whole thing? Well, I believe there's a balance here that we can find in the scriptures and just put to rest some of the, you know, the useless wranglings and backwards and forwards on the subject of where the balance lies between grace, faith and works. And so I want to share that scripture with you. It's from Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 8 through to verse 10. It's a familiar passage of scripture to many that are um, students of the word, but maybe there's some insight here that we can get with the help of the Holy Spirit as we look into the scripture. So I'm going to read it to you through and then just pick out some points here that are relevant in it. It says here in chapter 2 of the book of Ephesians, written to the New Testament church, those that have accepted Christ and are walking in his realm. It says here, by, for by grace you have been saved through faith. So, you know, salvation is a done deal and you access it by faith. Not that of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Talking about the faith that God gives us. Then in verse 9 it amplifies it further and says, not of works lest anyone should boast. So there's not a, it's not a self-help um, program here, a behavior modification thing that if we do this, we do that the next thing when we get there. And then in verse 10, it says, for we are his workmanship. So he's the one, he's the potter, we're the clay. He's the one who shapes and molds us into the image of Christ by the operation of the Holy Spirit. We're born with the seed, the eternal seed of God in us. And yet the transformation comes by the operation of the Holy Spirit in our lives on a continuing basis. For we are his workmanship created, see that created, not kind of slowly evolved or transformed through this or that technique or six steps to this or four steps to that. We are created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So there's a responsibility that we have to play here. It's a response in faith, first of all, and then second of all, walking in the good works that God has prepared before us. There's kind of a divine dance between the sovereignty of God and the faith response of mankind. Think of it in a kind of a joking way. You know, was Jesus a Calvinist or was he an Arminianist? Well, uh, think about it. Uh, he was neither. He was Jesus. We come along and we grasp at the sovereignty of God and we grasp at our responsibility and we try to make sense of it and we fall in the ditch on either side. Then there are those that fall in the ditch of, of good works. You know, we, we've got to do this stuff. You know, remember the book of James, it says, you know, without uh, works, uh, our faith is dead. And we just go to war with one another on all of these things. And yet in this passage of scripture, we've got all three here in a divine order, so to speak. We've We've got grace, first of all, emphasized. Then we've got faith emphasized. And then we've got works emphasized. Kind of three pillars to, uh, to Christian living, you could almost put it. Now, all things are of God, and they through Him, and they to Him. But without a divine partner, God can't perform His dance of grace. And so we've got grace, faith, and works working together. Let's read that scripture again. It's, it's worth and, and it bears repeating. For by grace you've been saved. It's not by faith you've been saved. It's by grace you've been saved. But yet it says through faith. Now faith is something, faith is something that God gives us but we have to use it. It's like a key. Um, much like, you know, the, uh, there's a program in the United States, at least maybe you've got an equivalent wherever you're listening here, but it's called Extreme Makeover where they take a house or well, they take a family, a needy family, whether it's a single mom or a single dad or a family or whatever that's in need. And they smash down the old house and they put up a new house and they assess each, each of the family members, the mom, the dad, the single mom, the single dad, the kids and everything like that. And they find out exactly what they like. And then they build out a, a home brand new in the space of a week. People pull up, uh, they, it's hidden behind the bus. They move the bus and then they say, 
behold your house and everyone just goes ballistic they're all the people that have helped in the project as well as the recipients of this wonderful gift that is given to them but you know for them to enjoy what has already been provided for them as a gift they didn't have to pay for it or anything like that they have to put in the key to the door and go out and explore everything in in the household and and on the property that has been given to them so by grace God's uh, sovereign work, things that he's done beforehand that we didn't have a part to play in. He then extends to us all of that grace, gracious favor, unmerited, through the means of faith. He gives us the faith even, but nevertheless, we've got to take it. We can't just stand there and, and, and not respond. I mean, relationship takes response. God aggresses in a positive way. And then we respond. If we don't respond, well, then he just, just doesn't slap us up and take us anyway. It's a response. We have to believe on him. We have to trust in him uh, and, and play a part in response to, to his love that is extended towards us. His mercy, his, 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 his kindness, his loving kindness, his patience, all those things have to be responded to. So I'm, I, I believe it's not an either-or situation between grace and faith or Calvinism and Arminianism, but it's a, it's a divine connection, a balance between grace and faith that produces the works that make a difference in, in the world in a practical sense. It's not just all a kind of spiritual out there, you know, I've got this relationship with God, but, um, you know, no earthly use here. No, God uses us and works in us and then works through us in the good works that he's ordained and he's planned. And we led by the Holy Spirit to move into those things and uh, be relevant in, in, in the society. We're heavenly minded. We're, we're setting our minds on things above, but that makes us earthly relevant. Because heaven and earth, we're supposed to pray and, and act out and live out and play our part in ensuring that thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we've got to have a clear vision of what it's like in heaven in order to translate that into practical realities down here on earth to make a difference in a positive way according to the will of God. So reading again. Verse 9, not of works, lest anyone should boast that faith is not of works. It's not, not trying to step up the ladder to get to God. No, he came down the ladder to get to us. He's come down off his mountain. He's met us here. He's died on the mountain. He's gone back up there. He sent his spirit. And now we're living in that dispensation. Then in verse 10, for we are his workmanship. So that kind of um, uh, side of things is emphasized again. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, for the purpose of good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. Now, if we don't walk in them through ignorance or through disobedience or stubbornness or fear or whatever it is, then we don't fulfill what we're supposed to fulfill in the body um, in our sojourn here. However, God's common grace and great grace, uh, you know, we, we're saved ultimately. We, we make it, so to speak, but we don't fulfill that which we call to to, to actually do. So I want to encourage you here to kind of just see the balance here between grace, faith, and works, and the divine order in which it comes from this passage here in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through to 10, and see how it connects up with other scriptures that point to this truth. So hopefully you enjoyed this, and let me know. Bye.